Hi, and welcome back to the second part of this series of videos talking about OpenStack and how OpenStack plays into Cisco's broader strategy for cloud computing. Now, if you remember from the last video, we talked about the OpenStack stack made up of apps, web apps, big data, uh, new applications, right? Highly scalable, highly uh, dynamic applications, a compute layer and a storage layer, which are defined today. And then we said that the network layer isn't as well defined, but today's uh, version of OpenStack, which is the C version, Cactus, uh, essentially was sort of a layer two only service expected, a very simple, flat network. Now, what we want to talk about in this uh, version of the video is something we're going to call net stacks, which is really focused on the network layer, and it's focused on the D release or the Diablo release of OpenStack that's coming out very soon. And this is the area where Cisco has been actively involved in the community, actively contributing open source code to the community, and trying to really drive uh, greater flexibility and greater capabilities into the network for those customers whose applications may want that. Right. So in today's OpenStack environment, the community is really focused on two types of areas. One is layer two only services, okay, and also focused on sort of layer three through layer seven, or really layer two to layer seven services. So simplified set of services and a more robust set of services, if you will. So let's dive into those a little bit. These are called net stack or network stack or whatever. So uh, when you hear the term net stack, this is what they're talking about. There really are two sort of areas. One is called quantum. Quantum tends to be the bucket that's holding all the focus on layer two services and Denavi, which is really focusing on those layer two through seven, layer three through seven types of containers. Okay, So let's break down those two things separately so people understand uh, why both work streams are going on, why they're slightly different, and why there's goodness uh, in, in either one of them. Right. So in the quantum space, they're really looking at sort of providing greater formality uh, and definition around those more simplified layer two services for applications that just really want layer two services. So they're trying to focus on address space management, IP addresses, MAC addresses, dealing with addresses moving. Okay. And the second thing they're trying to do is put a simple service in place to be able to connect a virtual machine and the, uh, the attributes of a virtual machine with the network. Okay. So uh, more simplified layer two service, uh, it's called quantum, and would have the ability for um, uh, applications to, to basically call that within OpenStack. Okay. Now, let's separate that from uh, the other area that Cisco's working in and primarily working on, which is the Denabi uh, focus area. It's really focused on this idea of containers. Okay? Now, what a container means is the idea that uh, there are more than um, you know, basic services that the network can provide. Load balancing, security services, firewall services, uh, application acceleration, whatever these things might be, um, intrusion detection, things that we've traditionally sold in the network uh, maybe a standalone boxes or appliances, but there's got to be an automated way to call these. And more importantly, if you're an application developer, you don't want to have to think about all this stuff. You just simply want to go, I want to describe a container, the thing that is the network and all these services. I'd like to describe it in application-centric terms. So I need it to be highly secure, or I need it to be highly available, or I need it to have uh, greater bandwidth than maybe other applications. However they want to describe that, we want to be able to, to provide them a programmable way, an abstracted programmable way of all the network services to be able to request certain kinds of layer two through layer seven services. So whether it's a VLAN, load balancing, security, uh, or whatever the service might be, a programmatic way to do that and the way that we're defining that is called a network container or container. So when you hear that talked about, it's trying to help define programmatically layer two through layer seven services, define uh, in an application-centric way those network services, and ultimately how to manage those containers, how to grow them, how to create them, how to grow them, how to shrink them, how to expand them if they need to be expanded. So a uh, great opportunity for Cisco to bring the knowledge we have in building large, large-scale networks, expandable networks, flexible networks, uh, in a way that's going to be abstractable and programmable. So uh, again, what we're talking about here is really talking about where the network plays in OpenStack, what Cisco's doing in that space, the fact that you've got multiple streams going on, sort of a simplified version and a more robust version, and again, you know, quantum being the layer two specific service, Denavi being the container-based, more robust kind of service, and the ability to give applications uh, flexibility to say, hey, this is what I want from the network. Do I want just connectivity? Do I want quality of service? Do I want greater security capabilities? Do I want a mix of those things? 
And this is where the flexibility uh, in the long run that service providers or enterprise may want because they're going to have a mix of applications that need different kinds of services. So uh, again, just the basics of where the network element and where Cisco is really starting to, to be involved with OpenStack is split between Quantum and Denabi, trying to provide a mix of services to applications and do it in a way that's abstracted from the individual boxes and automated so that applications, application programmers, services that need those, those uh, network layer, layer two through seven services can do it in an automated, flexible, dynamic way. Hope this helps. This is section two of a three-part series. The next section we're going to talk about why is Cisco doing this? Why is this good for Cisco? Where's the market moving? How do we differentiate in this space? Thank you.